So we are at the WeShare Fest in, in Paris. You just gave your keynote about uh, platform co-ops. So tell me, what it's all about? It's really about bringing shared ownership and governance into the sharing economy, which is what I think the sharing economy should have been about all along. Sharing all the way down, not just sharing stuff here and there and really renting it, but really sharing the platforms and the networks that we use to connect with one another, to make sure that the value that we're creating is really shared as well. Yeah, I think it's a really important one because what you see in, in the collaborative economy from the outside is new or mm -hmm. there are new things, but when you see, okay, how, how is it funded and how is, uh, is it organized, it's, it's just like we are, we are organizing companies for the last uh, decades. Yeah, absolutely. And the cooperative economy itself is not something so new. It's maybe new to the tech sector, right? Kind of odd that it's taken this long to get there. Uh, but but it's, uh, it's something that has been around not only throughout the modern industrial period, it's been a, um, a strategy and a, a tool for, for meeting needs that markets haven't been meeting. Uh, but it's also something go that goes back much further, you know, to guilds, to monasteries, to how tribes and villages would organize. Yeah. So this is really nothing new. It's about um, uh, bringing in a very sensible mode of economic organization to this platform economy uh, that is increasingly becoming the economy. Yeah, so, so you organized about a year ago a, a conference in, uh, in, in New York. Yeah, in November 2015, uh, as part of a series of, of meetings about digital labor that my colleague Trevor Schultz of the New School had been organizing for years. And this one attracted far more people uh, than, than the previous ones, which were really important events leading toward this. Um, uh, but it showed how much interest there is in this, in this uh, combination of cooperative ownership and, and online platforms. We had. Uh, uh, people coming from all over the world, entrepreneurs, um, CEOs of established companies, uh, uh, even venture capitalists, um, and city council members, people in government who are interested, uh, union leaders, uh, uh, workers, uh, people from, from all across the economy coming together in ways that I think were really, uh, were really new. Yeah, because, uh, but do you also see now things, things changing? Uh, because many people are interested, because I think Everybody can see the problem. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the problem is really clear. But do you also see some action? Absolutely. Uh, right now, I think there are a lot of really exciting initiatives to build an ecosystem. That's what we're trying to do. Um, you know, some people I think are very eager to jump into the apps. You know, and there are some cool apps that are emerging here. You know, things like Stocksy United, a stock photo uh, website for owned by photographers, or Fairmundo, a, a, a marketplace that the vendors own. Um, those are great and they're really exciting, but um, I think the most important thing in some ways is to build the supportive ecosystem. It's an ecosystem that enables the extractive online economy to exist. You know, uh, it, 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 these big companies like Uber and Facebook exist because of a certain ecosystem of investors, of tech schools, of culture, Burning Man, all these things that fit together and make these companies possible. And even just here at WeShare this week, I've um, been meeting with people who are building new financing tools uh, uh, that are really designed to work well with platform cooperatives, um, where the, the whole model, the whole business model is built so it really works for this kind of business uh, and related ones rather than other kinds. And this is something, again, that has happened historically. Wherever cooperative economies have taken root, they've had to create their own financing tools and their own legal structures, uh, work with government to make sure that the, um, the enabling structures are in place so that they can incorporate easily um, and so that there's um, a, a kind of supportive um, environment around them. This is all, you know, in some ways it's kind of um, unglamorous work, but it's really essential to creating um, what, to, to, to bringing about what I see as the goal, which is that when a creative person or community wants to build something, mm -hmm. it's really easy for them to do it democratically. Yeah, you know um, that they that that it's kind of a no-brainer um, that they don't have to sell their company to Wall Street. You know that they can build a company um, for the users, for the members, and then they can share that that um, that enterprise with the people who are excited about being yeah. part of it. Yeah, I, I I think that there there are some. When you look at the difference between the US and Europe, I think there are some, some challenges uh, uh, because 
also uh, like when you look at so like uh, the legal structure because in the US it's, it's, it's a big country uh, mm -hmm. like in, in Europe they're all small countries so I think it will be a, a, a challenge to, 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 to create a system that will work in every country. Well in the US um, incorporation law is by state okay. so, so actually we have 50 different sets of incorporation law to deal with. Yeah. You know, I, I was just down, uh, uh, finished a story about um, black-led co-ops in the South, in the Deep South, where co-ops have been an incredibly important strategy for uh, black farmers in particular to get a foothold in the economy. And uh, uh, there are, is, are enabling laws for agricultural cooperatives, but actually not for worker cooperatives in Mississippi, for instance. So the, uh, also not for cooperative grocery stores. So uh, the, the co cooperative grocery stores and the worker co-ops that are being formed there have to incorporate in another state. So it's very confusing, and, but it also points to the necessity of creating the kinds of umbrella organizations that can um, help advocate for the cooperative sector. And for instance, in California, um, some of our partners, um, such as at the Sustainable Economies Law Center, which has been a real leader in the platform co-op movement, um, uh, have just succeeded in improving the California co-op statutes to meet the needs of mm -hmm. the emerging co-ops. Mm -hmm. and, and what do you think, because um, you can start uh, from the start as a co-op, but yeah. is there also a possibility that you say, okay, now I'm like, I'm Airbnb or I'm Kickstarter and, and I want to do good and I want to change my model. Uh, yeah. Are there also ways to Absolutely. do that? Absolutely. I think there are two main strategies we're looking at. One is startups creating that ecosystem that I just mentioned. Um, the other is conversion. And again, this is what's happening offline too. You know, the folks who are uh, uh, really supporting, for instance, worker co-ops in the United States, they're putting a lot of energy right now into conversion, taking existing businesses, you know, a huge proportion of, of um, small businesses um, have owners who are close to retirement age. Mm -hmm. What are they going to do with those businesses? So they're working on conversion and they see that as a viable option. For platforms, I think it might be an even smarter um, move. On the one hand, there, um, platforms tend to be very high risk in the early stages and that might not be conducive to cooperative ownership in every, mm -hmm. in every case. It might be better to have you know, a high risk investor and a high risk founder, you know, this sort of classical model in the early stages. But then we need to figure out the transition so that those companies don't have to opt immediately for the IPO yeah. or the buyout, but instead they can, um, they, there can be a, a process by which they um, uh, uh, democratize themselves and, yeah. and spread out the ownership among the, the true stakeholders. Yeah. And, and this is something that I think you know, governments uh, might play a role in financing, mm -hmm. uh, uh, but it could be uh, uh, and I think it very likely should be, um, uh, you know, a, a, a kind of cluster of enabling organizations, uh, uh, financial institutions that, you know, kind of do what Goldman Sachs does to help a company have an IPO, but instead do the kind of financing that enables a company to, um, uh, uh, to become, you know, user controlled and owned. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and you just shared about, okay, uh, we have to build a new ecosystem, mm -hmm. but isn't there also the danger that, that we're going to build a new ecosystem that don't have any, have, has any connection with the existing organizations, uh, so you have to do everything again, uh, but also it, then it's also harder to, to make mm -hmm. the transition? Well, I, I think that there, the, there's a lot of play here. Um, for instance, you know, I was just talking with uh, uh, some folks here who are building a new financial tool and they're working with some experienced venture capitalists who actually see uh, an opportunity in the platform co-op sector to broaden their portfolio, right? To uh, make investments of a different kind than, than what they're making. They see this as a business opportunity and they like that there's this democratic upside, Yeah. right? Um, so I think there are a lot of opportunities to, um, to, to rather than reinventing the wheel, to shift a bit. And already, uh, internet culture has a lot of democratic practices built in. I mean, when you look at the governance of, um, of Debian, right, the, the distribution of Linux that's, that underlies Ubuntu and a lot of the, um, uh, uh, you know, really actually runs a lot of the internet, mm -hmm. though a lot of people don't know this. Debian is a network of open source developers who organize themselves through their own constitution their own bylaws, their own elections. You know, people hold offices and roles. So they effectively operate cooperatively, even though because it's an open source project, it's not 
owned mm -hmm. in you know quite the kind of formal cooperative way. Yeah. I think there's been a tremendous amount of democratic innovation in online communities around uh, intellectual property, around self-governance, around community maintenance, and the kinds of practices around user experience that, that, that feed into these kinds of behaviors. What we haven't really done is ownership. We've kind of left that to the, you know, to daddy. We've left that yeah. to the investors yeah. and to the bosses and yeah. to the founders, yeah. and um, we've ignored it. Maybe also because uh, with many uh, NGOs, uh, money is a dirty word. So, so, so I really see them uh, avoiding discussions around these kind of things because yeah. Yeah, they say, okay, but we don't want to be involved with that, but it's important to build a model that, that will also work in the future. Yeah, yeah, and it, it's, it's, a, it's about time. And I think especially in the moment of the kind of questioning around the sharing economy mm -hmm. and this collaborative economy, the time is right for people to start thinking about this really intensely. And, and we've just seen so much enthusiasm come out of, out of these ideas that we've been kind of floating around and yeah. passing around and, 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 and convening. Uh, and and uh, uh, so I think, I think people are ready and I think the building is already happening. Yeah. Uh, you know, what I'm trying to do right now is just travel as much as I can, connect with as many people as I can and help connect them with each other. Yeah. You know, I, I almost feel like I don't need to do anything but that um, because there is so much already going on. Um, and, and, you know, I, my hope is that these people who are building these platforms and these tools for the ecosystem uh, don't feel like they're in isolation, you know, mm -hmm. and they feel like uh, 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 they're working together and they're building something um, that they can share. And, they're, and, that, and, and I also want to help them see how far along this community already is, yeah. uh, which can be hard to see um, when you know one person's doing something in this part of the world and another person's doing something here. Um, so we've been playing around on a website called the Internet of Ownership at internetofownership.net. Uh, you know, it, it's a super rough prototype right mm -hmm. now, but we're playing around with building a directory of um, of some of the platforms and this and the supportive resources. Um, yeah. that are making this ecosystem happen. Yeah, so, that, so that this will also be part of the ecosystem, also sharing the, the internet, also make, uh, make it for everybody visible what's yeah. happening over where, uh, where, so everybody also knows, okay, we're not alone, and other people are, are also joining. And I think all the, the, the timing is perfect, especially when you look at labor platforms. Mm -hmm. uh, I, think it's, I think that's the, 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 the most yeah, actual discussion uh, yeah. uh, right now, and well, also and a really good discussion because, yeah, it's, yeah, that's where the urgency for us comes from. I mean, when when Trevor and I started working toward uh, developing the conference in New York, we were in conversation with groups like the Domestic Workers Alliance, uh, with the Freelancers Union, organizations that in the U.S. are working closely with the kinds of with the precariat, with the independent workers who are on the front lines mm -hmm. of the platform economy. Yeah, yeah. especially so, those domestic workers who are seeing their standards decline as platforms start to replace the um, you know, traditional kind of um, uh, word of mouth labor markets that they've operated yeah, in. Yeah. And so they're, um, they're, they're, it, there's a real human imperative to, um, uh, uh, to, to make sure that the rules are set fairly. And, and who better to set the rules than the people who are doing the work. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and this is something again that goes back to the union labor halls, you know, of, uh, a century ago, uh, you know, up till today, uh, the, the, the uh, protecting the rights of people who are doing the work, mm -hmm. you know, to, to be involved in setting the conditions of yeah, work. Yeah, yeah, I think it's a good thing because also I'm also busy with the questions around responsibility of platforms. And, and normally, when you see like like uh, take Uber, uh, they say, okay, it's the biggest uh, taxi company in the world without owning a taxi. Yeah. But the cars they are driving, they are making accidents, they're killing people, they're they're getting getting so. So they are, they, are, they are transferring the risk That's from right. a company to the individual, and the individual doesn't have the, the, the skills to, to really uh, judge, okay, uh, what is the real risk, what, uh, what is, what is the, tr the, the true price? So I think this will be a really uh, important role. And you know, this is, on the one hand, something like Uber has been really wonderful. It, it, it creates a convenience that mm -hmm. I think many of us appreciate a lot. Uh, uh, but at the same time, it's, it's done so by rolling back protections that workers have struggled for for a long yeah. time. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, it, it, a century ago and more, 
workers were banding together, creating mutual insurance networks to, to, to um, uh, deal with just this problem, mm -hmm. right? And then those evolved into modern insurance companies and into certain worker protections that were yeah. encoded in law. Yeah. Yeah. Uber is, is creating a, a situation where we're kind of starting from scratch. And, and I think that's, that's a big problem. Um, and so I think we need to work very quickly um, to make sure that we can um, that we can experience the convenience yeah. of these platforms, yeah. but we can do so uh, knowing that that we're um, you know in solidarity with everybody who's involved in it, yeah. and that we're creating you know a truly collaborative economy. Yeah. Uh, you know, an economy where you know you can sit, sit, get in the car with the Uber driver and you know uh, uh, experience a. a a relationship of equals, mm -hmm. you know, where they're a, you know, a co-owner of their, of their project, you're, you know, supporting them, you're, uh, 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 you know, that they're setting the, the conditions of their work fairly, yeah. um, you know, that's a, it's a, it's, that's real sharing, yeah. you know, and that's the kind of, I think, also that encounter that so many of us mm -hmm. crave uh, and, and that excites so many people about mm -hmm. this idea of a sharing economy. Yeah. Uh, and so I think it's an idea worth making real. And don't you think, because uh, also during keynote, yeah, you, yeah, you gave some examples uh, uh, on some platform co-ops. Uh, mm -hmm. But what I saw is uh, the, uh, in the names, uh, the, uh, the, the, the last four were all, were all about good green uh, together. And my experience uh, also with, with, with uh, sustainability is that if you really want to scale up and make impact, then we only focus on the green parts, mm -hmm. you will never make it. So, mm -hmm. so isn't, isn't there also a risk when you're focusing also in the names of the cooperatives uh, with yeah, the benefits uh, uh, they're offering that you're going to miss the biggest part of your target group? Because in the end, like, like probably the, the, the average no, consumer no, no, yeah. is to can choose to, uh, uh, between Uber and a co-op Uber with, her, uh, with good intentions but bad service, they will choose this one. I think that's absolutely right. And, and, that, and that's where we need to find the competitive advantages of cooperative enterprise, right? We need to find ways in which these businesses can work in the marketplace fairly and where they can do a great job, yeah. right? And, and already some kind of sharing economy companies, on-demand economy companies are finding this. I mean, they're, they're realizing that the Uber model isn't working for them yeah. because they actually need, in order to provide the service that they, um, that, that, that their customers expect, they need their uh, workers to be invested yeah. in the effort. Yeah. And they found that a way of doing that is to do equity sharing. Yeah. You know, these aren't cooperatives. Um, some of them might become uh, something closer to this, but, um, but they're starting to cut their employees in. Yeah. Um, and so we're seeing, we're, and we've been working with some companies who are, who are interested in doing this, not because, out of the goodness of their hearts, mm -hmm. right? Because fundamentally, they're still structured in such a way that however good those people are, mm -hmm. you know, they ultimately, when they go to work each day, they're working for their shareholders, yeah. right? And yeah. so, you know, in the meantime, you know, at, until we realign these companies, we need to recognize that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I think there are really good cases to be made for aligning ownership uh, and and, um, uh, and and the purpose of, of these businesses, and you know we're having some success there. But you know, again, it's an uphill battle. We're in a society, we're in a world with an incredible amount of inequality, and you know what we're talking about is essentially redistributive. Yeah. You know, we're talking about creating you know an economy where the incentives are oriented toward democratic enterprise. You know where the incentives are set up so the best way to make a cool thing happen mm -hmm. you know is to share it not to enrich a few people who happen to invest in it yeah, yeah. and uh and and that's that's going to be challenging and there are going to be people who aren't uh, uh, uh going to embrace that wholeheartedly because they have something to lose yeah and we just have to live with that yeah and and i think that um you know these are the kind of these are the challenges that this this effort will, will face and um but I also think that there are challenges that people are up for. You know, we're, we're, we're ready for a, a different system, not just because of our utopian ideals, but because um, the way things are headed are, is not going to work for a lot of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, I, I think uh, again, momentum uh, is, is good because uh, uh, after the, the crisis, uh, people were angry, but they didn't 
uh, give shit about it. Mm -hmm. So, so they, 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 they didn't do anything. But now I really see in society that people say, okay, but, but okay, we're here and, and, and now something has to change. Yeah. So, you know, I, I've reported on, on protest movements for a long time. And, you know, my last book was about Occupy Wall Street. And, and Occupy Wall Street didn't come about at the lowest point of the economic crisis, right? And there's this theory of change that people often have that it's when we're most desperate that we mm -hmm. respond. Um, uh, it's when things are really bad and hit rock bottom. And um, you know what I saw there is people started taking to the streets around the world in 2011, not because things had gotten so bad that they couldn't handle them anymore, but actually because there had been a glimmer of hope mm -hmm. because they'd seen something happen, something change in Tunisia, yeah. right? And that possibility spread all over the place after that. And I think what we're trying to offer here with platform cooperativism is not just something to say no to in the midst of a crisis, but in the midst of a kind of crisis, something that we can say yes to, yeah. something that we can enthusiastically embrace yeah. and say, this is, this is an alternative that is practical, that is, you know, reasonable. That that that, um, you know, it's not an absolute. You know, it's a horizon. Uh, um, there's a lot of gray area in between, and we're willing to go there. Um, but but that it's it's exciting. Yeah. Uh, and, and it's it's not just another complaint. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. Talking about hope, I think the sun is uh, starting to shine over here yes. uh, again in, uh, in in Paris. Yes. So uh, <laughs> thanks for the interview. Thank Good luck you with very your, much. Uh, Thanks for what you're doing. Everything and uh, and uh, uh, one more time, uh, the, the the URL of the website is uh, internetofownership.net, and you can also keep updated about uh, the the next conference this coming year uh, and the book that we're putting out in the fall at platformcoop.net. Okay, cool. All right, I will check it. Thank Great. you.